Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to show you how I made this adorable Northern Lights tumbler using just mica powders and a little pinch of epoxy additive and glitter. This technique is so quick and simple that I was actually able to have this tumbler on its final coat the same day I started it. Now, I can't take credit for this mica powder technique because I've certainly seen it done before, but I just wanted to show you my take on it. I'm starting out here with a 20 ounce skinny from Makerflow Crafts. I will have a link in the description box below along with a link for any other products you see me use. I do prefer to sand my tumblers. I know there's a lot of debate in the crafting communities about whether or not you need to sand, but there is a coating that comes on the tumblers from the manufacturer and it can cause paint, epoxy, and glitter to not adhere properly. So just to be safe and make sure I have the best quality product, I always prefer to sand. Of course, that is always a personal preference and you do whatever works best for you. But as you can see on my paper towel, a lot of gunk comes off my tumbler and I definitely don't want that to interfere with my cup after I've worked so hard to make something beautiful. So after I've sanded it down with a touch of Dawn Power Wash, I just like to give it a final wipe with a little water or alcohol just to make sure I got all that residual soap off. After my tumbler was fully prepped, I sprayed it with a light coat of Rust-Oleum 2X in Slate. I let that dry thoroughly and then I got to work with my epoxy. So here I just mixed up 10 mils of CC DIY Fast Set. I love using the Fast Set Epoxy because it allows me to move on to the next step quicker. So I mixed up about 10 mils here and I wound up using about five on the cup. You want it just a little bit thicker than you would normally use for like an epoxy method application, but you also don't want it so heavy that it's going to run while you're working with it. You want the epoxy just thick enough to stay in place, but to also have some movement when it comes time to start your mica powders. I chose to spray paint my tumbler slate instead of black because I really wanted a little more depth and dimension in my northern light sky and I also wanted a little bit of difference from the tree line I plan on spray painting black later. Once I have epoxy on my tumbler, I set it to the side and let it sit for about five minutes just to give that epoxy coat a chance to level itself out. Now I'm going to work with my magic micas. They're actually white in the bag and very boring looking, but once you put them on a dark base, the color comes to life and really pops. So you can use any brush you want for this technique, but I prefer to use a fan brush for it. So I'm just gonna dip my brush directly into my loose powder and then dab it onto my wet epoxy layer. You wanna make sure that you're not dabbing it on too heavy because you can get some whitish streaks since the powder is basically white when you go to spread it in the end. So you want a good layer so that you get good color saturation, but not so heavy that you're gonna have clumpy mica in the end. So I like to dab it around in sort of organic shapes and diagonals and S shapes. I prefer that to just putting straight up and down lines on my tumbler because when we smear it in the end, we're only going to go in a straight up and down motion. So you won't get any lateral side to side movement from your powders. So I like to give them that side to side movement as I apply them. There is no right and wrong way on how to apply these mica powders, so just go with whatever feels good. I sort of just look and see where there's gaps, and I put colors that complement each other next to each other so that they will blend nicely. But like I said, there's no right and wrong way to do this, so just do whatever feels good, and in the end, it's going to be beautiful. So once you've gotten your powders laid out however you think you want them, then it's time to take a stiff brush. And I like to use a wider brush. This is actually a cheapy one that I got from Walmart in a two pack. And I just do one smooth solid stroke from the bottom of the cup up to the top rim. And that's gonna spread those mica powders out and give them that look like they're glowing from within like the Northern Lights do in the sky. So it's important that you blend these colors out a little bit, but it's also important that you don't over blend them. So you don't want to do too many up and down strokes. So after I did my initial pull down with my brush, I noticed there were a few spots that I didn't absolutely love where I felt like I could get a little more color saturation. So it's totally okay to go in with a second dip and put in a little more if you feel like your cup needs a little more pizzazz. I will caution you that you can over blend though. So I would be kind of aware of that. You do want areas where there's more pigmentation and areas where there's less to give that dimension. You also wanna be really sure that you're only moving in one direction on the tumbler. You don't wanna drag your paintbrush up and down as you go. You just wanna move in one direction. So I'm pulling again from the bottom of the tumbler up to the top rim. If you go back and forth, you're just gonna smear those powders sort of back to their original position and you're not gonna get that depth and dimension that you wanted out of your color. It's not going to look like it's glowing. 
Once I have my northern lights the way I want them and I'm happy with the look I have, I set my tumbler aside for about an hour and a half to fully cure so I could be ready for the next step. So here I've added 15 mils of fast set epoxy along with some shimmer additive to my tumbler. I also decided I wanted some stars in my night sky, so I took a pinch of antique gold and mixed it into my remaining epoxy in my medicine cup and rubbed that into the top two thirds of the tumbler. You wanna make sure you apply all your sparkles and stars to this layer because next you're gonna paint on your tree line and you don't want stars over your trees. So I'm just taking a look at my cup and making sure there's no imperfections that are gonna interfere and sort of deciding how high up I want my tree line to start. I prefer to do my tree line as a stencil and spray paint it on rather than try to lay black vinyl straight around the bottom of the tumbler. I also like this method because it allows me to spray paint the bottom of the tumbler to match. So you can do it either way, whatever works for you is great. I just find this easier and I don't have to worry about the vinyl laying straight. This is particularly handy if you're using a non-straight tumbler. If you have any kind of taper, you know you can't lay vinyl without having wrinkles and overlap, and that won't matter in this case because all of the stencil is gonna be peeled off in the end. After spray painting my tumbler with Rust-Oleum Black Matte Spray Paint and letting it dry thoroughly, it's time to remove all the stencils I had placed. So as you go to peel up your vinyl stencil, you might find that you lose little pieces of it down in between the corners of the trees. So just take whatever tool you like to work with and pick those little pieces out. Just make sure you're being really careful not to scratch your spray paint in the process. So if you're impatient like me and you find that maybe your spray paint wasn't fully dry, or if you get a little aggressive and you nick some scratches into your spray paint, all is not lost at this point. All you have to do is take a paper towel with some acetone and completely wipe off your tree line and start again. At this point, all of your artwork is under a layer of epoxy, so if you make a mistake here, we can back up one step without ruining our tumbler. Once you're happy with the way your tree line looks, it's time to move on to decals. Now I'm using a small decal and I'm only putting it at the top of the tumbler, so I felt pretty confident going ahead with my vinyl work at this point. But if you plan on laying a large decal, especially one that's going to overlap over your tree line, I highly suggest you add a coat of epoxy to protect your paintwork before you move on. The last thing you wanna do is pull up paint while you're peeling off your transfer tape from your decal and having to redo your tree line. So I just made a small decal out of a compass rose with the word waterlust through it. I wanted something metallic and pretty, but I didn't want it to overtake the beauty of the northern lights. So I just cut this small decal out about three and a half inches with some champagne metallic gold vinyl. I typically only reverse weed very intricate decals, and this one is not, but I was working with a new brand of vinyl, and I didn't trust it to behave. Fortunately, it behaved really nicely, and I actually really like this vinyl. So now it's time to look at your cup and decide what's the best placement for this decal. I chose to go over an area that wasn't quite as color saturated as some of the other areas so that I wouldn't distract from the beauty of those. So I just line up my decal, make sure it's center and straight, and then I applied it with my fingers and gave it a little rub with my burnishing tool. Typically I sand my tumblers before I do my vinyl work, but this particular design is so flat and non-textured that I was able to omit that step completely. I did, however, take my Dremel tool with my flap wheel attachment and sand the top rim of my cup. I wanted to expose that fine line of stainless steel and that allows my epoxy to adhere to the tumbler itself and not just to the outside of the design work. 
So now it's time for my last layers of epoxy. I did two of 15 mils each. The first one I used CC DIY's Fast Set, and the second one I used their regular Artist Resin, which I always use for my final top coat. I let that very last layer spin for about four hours before setting it to the side and letting it cure for a full three days. Once that was finished, I had a beautiful new tumbler to share, and I was so excited to go take pictures of it. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked what you watched, please like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos from me. You can also connect with me and other great makers by joining my Facebook group, Add a Bit of Bling Creative Community, which is linked in the description box below. I can't wait to see what you create.